On this episode, we're going to sort out some wiring. Okay, so what I want to do is just kind of get to work on the engine bay here, clean up some of the wiring. There's a lot of stuff that's just been patched together and uh, yeah, it's kind of a mess. So I'm going to start by just kind of <clears throat> cleaning it up. Uh, it's kind of dirty in here as well, so I'm going to clean it up. Any loose wires, I'm going to try to label the best I can. Anything that's just disconnected, I'm going to uh, tape off so that it's not going to be grounding out on anything and uh, just kind of work backwards and see how it goes. Okay, so I'm going to take a bit of a break from uh, under the hood. It's still a bit of a mess, but I'm slowly getting it figured out. Everything's kind of been hacked up and pieced together, and so uh, I think a lot of things, it's not very stock under there, so uh, anyways, eventually I'll see if we can get it running. I did have it running at one point uh, when we very first got the car, just to confirm that it did run, but uh, just... <clears throat> Anyways, I'm going to take a break from that and uh, kind of move on into the inside. Uh, this is the uh, gauges that were in there when I got it. If you're a uh, long-term subscriber or if you've just uh, been following along in all the videos, you may have seen this uh, when we were doing the disassembly. It uh, has been highly modified. As you can see, those aren't stock gauges and I don't believe they were working originally when we got the car. So, uh, at some point early on, I picked up this, which is uh, more of a stock setup, um, but it's not original to this year car, but uh, the dash that was in the car when we got it is not uh, stock either, so it has a later date dash, so this is kind of a matching system for this, but I'm not 100% sure. This is uh, functional as well. Looks like it's had a little bit of a repair on the back of it. So um, what I'm going to do now is just kind of move inside and then see uh, what wires have got there, what plugs are available, and uh, see if anything looks like it'll just connect right up. I'm going to start with this one just because that's what I pulled out of it and uh, kind of go from there. The light switches and everything are on these so I want to see uh, if I've got any plugs that are just going to plug right in just to, so I can at least get the headlights and things working. So. Okay, so I'm working in here, and uh, previous owner, I think, had problems with the ignition switch, so I'll just show you what uh, we've got here. Is, uh, he had one switch that he just wired up for the uh, fuel pump, and a separate switch that he uh, wired up for the uh, starter. Um, right, I can't even remember which one's which right now. And maybe this is for the starter this is the fuel pump so uh, to repair this I'm going to uh, 
just pull the ignition switch out and uh, switch that out. And to do that, I've got to remove the uh, steering wheel. So I basically got the horn pad removed off of here. And uh, in the past, what I found the easiest way to do this, because it's hard to do because the steering wheel turns when you're trying to undo it, is just to use an impact gun. Uh, so that's what I'm going to try here. And uh, hopefully it just zips it off. We'll uh, give it a whirl. Here we go. Okay, so now I've got the ignition switch out of the car. Uh, and basically I'm just gonna run some tests. So I've got uh, power running to the number 30 terminal of the switch. And then uh, from this, on my phone here, I have some instructions on how to test this off of uh, cabbyinfo.com. So, with the ignition off, I should have continuity through 30 and pin S, which is right here. So let's see if this lights up. Yes, continuity there. So that test is successful. Then with the ignition turned to on, I should have continuity uh, from 30 to X. So I've got 30 and Where's X? X is right here. Let's see if it's got continuity. Yes, I do. And I also should have continuity between 30 and uh, 15, which is right beside X here. And hopefully you can see that. But yes, I have continuity there. Now, to actually get the car to start, send power to the starter, I should have continuity between 30 and 50 so 50 is right here uh, and when I turn the key to start let's see if I, I can hold this here I do not have continuity I do not have continuity with 30 and 50 so just the, the next test is I should also have continuity from uh, 30 and 15 still. Uh, so with the ignition on, I have continuity there. And when I hit start, I still have continuity to 15. So, But I do not have continuity to uh, 50. So that's why this ignition switch wasn't working. And that's probably why the previous owner Jerry rigged that uh, start switch and fuel pump switch. So um, th at least this is why the starter wasn't turning over. Now I just have to figure out why uh, he wasn't getting power to the fuel pump. So, Okay, back inside the car, <clears throat> this is the switch that he was using to activate the fuel pump. Um, and like I said previously, I did get the car to start using this method. So now what I'm going to do is just... Uh, Trace these wires back so I can figure out where the hot wire to the fuel pump is and then I can make sure that uh, I have power going to the fuel pump uh, when I reinstall the proper ignition switch. So that's what I'm going to do now. Trace that wire from the uh, fuel pump switch and uh, have basically determined that it is simply uh, connected to the ground on the ignition module. So uh, one of the wires goes to the brown wire on the ignition module and the other wire is going straight to the ground on the battery. So all it is doing is disconnecting the ground from the ignition module when you flip the switch. So. Um, if anybody knows exactly how that affects the fuel pump, just leave uh, that information in the comments. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how that works. I know that uh, um, the fuel pump should just kick on for a few seconds when you turn the key on just to prime the system and then should cut back out unless the engine is running. So, um, But in any case, I've, uh, I'm glad I've determined exactly where that's going and uh, I'll have to do a little bit more research to 
let's see how that uh, how to rectify the situation. Uh, I did have the car running, but that was about a year ago, and I can't remember exactly how much the turning of the ignition switch uh, affected the fuel pump. I know I did have to have the ignition switch on to have it start, but then I also had to flip the switch to activate the fuel pump, and then flip the other switch to activate the starter. So, um, anyways. Uh, I've got a few more things I need to do. I need to purchase the new ignition switch and uh, I actually need a new battery. The uh, battery's toast on this. So I've got a few more things to uh, pick up. And uh, But basically that's where I'm out of time for this episode. So um, I'm looking forward to I did order some uh, sound insulation for the car. So that should be coming up in the next few episodes. And then we can start putting the interior back together. Um, but as always, if you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. We'll see you next time on Analog Generation.